when we're thinking about what kind of underground workforce am I working with and who am I feeding, we basically look at bacteria feeding on very short, simple types of sugars to fungi that are feeding on more complex, long chain sugars. Uh, and what I mean by sugars is even things like cellulose, lignin, those woody structures of a plant and even a tree like wood chips, those are what we call the complex sugars. And those are the things that our fungi are feeding on. So if we look at these materials here, what you can see is we go from simple things like this is actually just simple white sugar if we were to apply that then actually we're stimulating a whole lot of bacteria in that process i've got milk here milk stimulates our lactobacillus they're actually in the atmosphere all the time and the minute that we put a little bit of milk out we see the stimulation of lactobacillus and it actually doesn't matter what kind of milk products we're using like that might be um whole milk, it might be pasteurized milk, it might be milk powder, as we still see this response with microbiology. Now lactobacillus are very beneficial in soil environments, just like they are for our guts. They are called facultative, which means they will live in aerobic or anaerobic environments. We find this can actually be a really great input, uh, very cost effective, uh, really helpful for a lot of very simple fungal diseases is the stimulation of these lactobacillus. What we've got here is molasses, another very simple sugar. If you think about um, it is just sugars. We don't use a lot and you will see this response with our um, bacteria. Again, very bacterial, very strong bacterial foods. Here I have kelp. Kelp has some, some complexity in it, but at the same time it's stimulating again a lot of bacteria, but we see more diversity in who responds to the application of kelp. And as you know, it also has a lot of plant growth hormones, trace elements, all sorts of benefits from putting kelp into the system. This one here is my fulvic acid. I like using these on turf because they're so adaptable, so easy to use. Fulvic acid comes from soft brown coal. Um, it's chemically extracted. You can also extract it off things like our compost, um, like actual compost. So compost in itself, if we were to add water to it and suspend it and then extract that water off, you'll see a component of fulvic acid. So fulvic acid is always this light kind of golden color. Really great input. This one here is a fish emulsion. Fish emulsions are more simple foods. Uh, they are still feeding a lot of Bacteria, what I like to use is a fish hydrolysate, which is much more concentrated. It will feed more fungi in that process. Um, but again, a really good, complex, wide range of microbiology that respond to it. Here I have a compost extract. So you can see that golden color I was talking about. Um, this will stimulate a wide range of microbiology, but you're also inoculating with beneficial microbes in the system. This one here is my vermicast extract. So this has been through a worm's rear end at some point. It's very soluble. There's a lovely humic dark color to this product. We see a lot of benefits from across the spectrum and also it's inoculating soil with our beneficial nematodes and our protozoa. And then this here is our humic acid, right? It's very, very dark. It's very concentrate comes from soft brown coal. It is the concentrated energy form to stimulate fungi. And we see huge fungal responses from applications of humix. Um, I'm just gonna be careful that I make sure I water this stuff in or apply to soil. It can stain plants on occasion. So just do spot tests if you're gonna be using this. So just to summarize, what we've got here are our biological foods that go from more bacterial driven to more balanced nutrition, and then these are very strong fungal feeders.